Hi, I'm Nick and this is the TBT channel. In this video, I'm going to take a look at two entry level spring powered air rifles suitable for general use, light target or field use. Um, both of these rifles I have in front of me are under £400. Again, I've used Sportsman's Gun Centre as my measuring stick because then we're measuring apples against apples. What we have here is an HW99S or an HW50S, okay? This one is my one, it's in a CS stock. We're gonna ignore the stock on this particular video because it is irrelevant. We're looking at the standard one, but I don't have a standard stock. And we're gonna compare it against the HW35, which <clears throat> you may know isn't my favorite air rifle, but that is a personal choice. It is a fantastic rifle. I know it is a great rifle. The prices of these, the 50S currently is £347 and the HW35 is £379. So they're within 30 odd quid of each other. I think it's at 30 odd bit. They're close in price. They're both a brake barrel and they're both good quality and they're both, most importantly for my UK viewers, they are both perfect for the UK limit, okay? The stroke and the bore of these guns lends itself to a sub 12 foot pound use. It doesn't need short stroking, it doesn't need any faffing around inside of it to, to make it work well at sub 12, but like anything, it will benefit from stripping, cleaning, relubing properly and putting back together. And if at that point you want to fit a TBT kit, that will make it better again. But you do not need to short stroke either of these ones to make them work well for the UK. So why would you be looking at these two air rifles? Um, they are, they, they, I mean, Voirock are a very good brand. They can be improved very easily by, as I said, stripping, cleaning and rebuilding. But that goes the same for any other make. But what you get with the Virarch is cons uh, consistency. OK, if you buy one, they are consistently good. Other makes can be cheaper, but quality is hit and miss. And I know a few of them, and I'm going to be looking at them in the coming weeks or months. A few of them offer a very good after sale service where if you get a duffer, they'll replace it free of charge. And that's great, but by getting a Virarch, generally speaking, it doesn't need replacing. It will work well. The barrels on these are extremely accurate. The guns themselves are well put together. And being a brake barrel air rifle, it lends itself well to a beginner or somebody who wants simplicity or somebody who's in the field and wants a fast second shot. So. These two guns are similarly priced, similar action, and very similar performance. Let's start off by looking at the HW99 slash HW50S. Now, I'm saying S because the HW50 is available as a Mark II, and that comes with the perfect trigger rather than the record trigger. Spend the extra few quid, get the record trigger, okay? These rifles are, in the UK, pretty much legendary now. It's, it's I, I don't know many people that don't have one. If they have a few air rifles, they tend to have an HW99. Now, it comes as standard with Virarch's open sights. They're good open sights, um, but as the years go by and my eyesight dwindles, I find that scoping is the way forwards. But if you're after an open sight back guard plinker, either of these rifles will do because these sights work exceedingly well. The record trigger unit, as I've covered in a lot of my videos now, it's a fantastic unit, it's easy to adjust, it's very, very precise, and it assists finding the most accuracy you can get from your rifle. The drawbacks of a 99 are the two-piece cocking arm and the potential galling issue. Now this can happen with the HW35 as well because it has a similar setup, although it isn't as prevalent in the 35 as it is in the 99. So the 99 is the cheaper of the two by 30 odd quid. Um, and it comes with its standard Manelli stock, which is 
a very good stock actually it's it's on my hw30 over there that i've recently got and they've started putting the hw35s into that stock so it's a more sculpted stock a lot of people don't like it because it's got virarch engraved into it i prefer it to the traditional 35 stock one of my major points with the 35 the thing is i don't like is that that line there and the just general blandness of it oh so but um the new stocks look quite interesting they're still too short they're still like rishi sunak's trousers they don't really come down far enough on the gun they should in my opinion like this come to the end of the breech block not stop short of it but on the 35 you can't do that because it's got the lever so a 99 lots of people buy these it's extremely accurate but Ideally, you do want to get inside of it and sort out that galling fix as soon as you get it. But once you've done that, the barrels are exceedingly accurate. The gun is exceedingly accurate. The firing cycle on these at sub 12 is extremely good. If you get a 2.2, it'll happily run at 11 foot pounds or a little bit more. If you get a 177, though, if you're buying a 177, 99 or 50S, Keep the power under 10.5 foot pounds and it will shoot much sweet, sweeter and you'll get much less recoil and you'll be able to achieve more accuracy. And uh, looking at ballistics charts, the difference between 10.5 and 11.5 and foot pounds at 50 yards is less than quarter of an inch. So don't worry about that extra foot pounds. You won't notice it except for the redu reduction in recoil. Your target won't notice it. And if you're shooting rabbits, the rabbit certainly won't notice it. So the 99 is the modern choice. Let's say the modern choice for the for the uh, aspiring hunter, for the beginner or the intermediate, or in fact anybody. Anybody could have a 99 and anybody can enjoy using it because it is a well-made rifle. So I'm going to put him to one side now. We'll take a look at the HW35. Now, personal preferences aside, it shares much of the advantages of the HW99-50. It's a Virarch. It's very well built. It's got an exceedingly... I mean, they've got the same barrel. It's the 15mm outside diameter barrel. Okay, so they've both got the same barrel blank in them. They're extremely accurate. This one has the advantage that you do have a thumb latch there to release the barrel, which means quieter operation in the field. Some people just prefer it because it gives them a sense that it's more it's more secure than a chisel D10. I, I think they're about the same. I, I, I've never had an issue with either, but some people prefer that. But what certainly is better is that this one has the screw on trigger block rather than the bayonet fitting there. So it's 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 a quality thing you know these are good it's okay it does the job but there's something about the screwing block that just makes you feel yeah this is going to last forever and it will and they do and they have they've been around for two maybe three thousand years i'm not exactly sure the design has changed very very little the stock certainly has changed very very little they used to have a rounded bit there some of the old ones had a single-sided safety catch some had no safety catch but since the very first days of the HW35, fundamentally, it hasn't changed. And that's because it works. The fact I don't like it is neither here nor there. It works and it is extremely good. The major difference between this gun and that gun is that this one has a 30 millimeter piston as opposed to the 26 millimeter piston in that one. So it has a shorter stroke. And I've been shooting these side by side this morning before making this video because I want to tell you my practical opinions of them rather than personal aesthetics and things like that. And I can tell you that it's a heavier piston in here. It's a larger, heavier, wider piston, but it travels a shorter distance. And honestly, I feel this has a little bit more of a thump to it, okay? it's an enjoyable thump it doesn't pull the gun off aim it doesn't affect doesn't seemingly affect anything it's it's it feels lovely to shoot they both feel lovely to shoot but that one that one has less movement less going on this one 
you can feel the things moving. You can feel the extra weight of that piston going around inside of it. But it's a reassuring feeling. It's a short, sharp thump. You know, it's not the whomp of, a, of an HW18 standard form trying to stay under 12, where the piston's traveling like that. This is just a smack, and it's gone. It's, oh, that's fired. It's crisp. Crisp is the word. So shooting-wise, shooting-wise, I, I think I prefer the 35. That's going to that's gonna shock some people. It shocked me. Okay, it did shock me. The new stock that is coming out on these that people are divided about, it's taken away two of the things I don't like about this gun, and I'm getting very close to actually buying one. This, this one isn't mine. It's, 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 it's a friend's, and I've been working on it for him. You'll see the, uh, the, the video on taking it apart and things like that. But it is lovely to shoot. So it's an extra 30-odd quid. The new stock's going to be better. In fact, the new stock is virtually identical to the new stock on the HW50 slash 99. So from that point of view, I can't separate them. It's the same design stock. The barrel is slightly longer on the 35. You get all of that into the shocks. It is quite long, but they do do a 35K and they do do a screw cut one as standard, I believe, which you can't get on a 99. You pay more for that, but it is an option that you can do. So if it were me today, And I was going to, I didn't have a brake barrel, medium weight, wait, wait. This is 700 grams more than the HW99 slash 50. Uh, but it doesn't feel it. I don't know where that weight is. It's, it's, that might be why the firing cycle feels nice, but it is a little heavier, but not heavy enough, I believe, to make a difference in my decision if I were walking around the fields with it. So if I were looking for a brake barrel, air rifle for walking around with, or for shooting in my garden with, or for informal plinking target shooting at a club with friends, I don't know which one I would choose. I actually, I've, I love the 99. I've had 99s forever and I've always hated the 35. And for that reason, I'm going to say I would get the 35 because I'm warming to it. And I like the new stock that lots and lots of, lots of people don't like, but lots and lots of those people love this stock and I didn't. So if you've got less than £400 to spend on a quality springer that's going to last you a lifetime, buy an HW35. That's my conclusion. I can't believe it. Please like, subscribe, hit notifications, and I will see you all again soon. I've got to go and have a lay down in a dark room. Thank you. Goodbye.